Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing an ink from a very interesting company. That company is uh, Intelligentsia Imperium. Uh, this is a relatively new uh, brand on the market uh, and quite mysterious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the packaging because it, it's a it's an experience with this pen, uh, this ink, sorry. Uh, I'll show the, I'm on multiple papers with a couple of little tests and things like that. And then, uh, yeah, give some thoughts on it. Okay, so this is the box uh, it comes in. It's a very luxurious box with this lovely sort of a uh, gold and silver colored, you know, leaf on it. Um, you take the top off, which I'll just do, hopefully I can fit this under the camera. There we are. Uh, and the ink is presented on a lovely little like material bed. It's got these lovely wax seals and ribbons um, that goes over the top there to like uh, as a, um, you know, to, to show the if it's open, it's been, well, if it's been, if it's off, it's been opened or that kind of thing. Lovely glass bottle, nice lines to it, uh, good size. Uh, and you also get in this box a like certificate of authenticity and stuff with some interesting uh, information uh, about the ink and the production and um, that it's authentic and genuine and all these kinds of things. A couple of interesting uh, things in regards to this. The names on here, Hubert von Zahnerbrunnen and Festus von uh, uh, Kiefenkloster. So basically you've got Herbert of uh, Cream Fountain and Festus of Pine Monastery. Interesting, uh, which I'll get into in a second when we look at some other things to do with the ink. So the ink I'm reviewing is Tharos Brown, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it's a beautiful, it's actually, it's a really beautiful brown. It's got some real beautiful chocolatey, earthy depth to it and some nice light shading. Uh, and it's just a beautiful color, like a really genuinely beautiful brown. Uh, not super saturated, uh, but very, very um, warm. I have the ink on the test page here on Tomo River paper, and I had it in uh, two pens for this review, the Twisby Eco Broad and a Twisby Eco Extra Fine. Uh, and the, it performed very nicely in both. So let's talk about uh, this ink then. The five points. It's an earthy brown, as I said. It's got some lovely chocolatey warmth to it. It's very nice and um, me medium sort of saturated, which we'll get into in a sec. Um, it's got some some water resistance. So after the water was on here, you can see, you can still get the definition there. It's definitely not a waterproof ink or not a water resistant ink. Just a, you know, sort of, it's got some water resistance there, you know, if you happen to get it wet. It's a relatively new brand, only made public in 2020. Uh, although the company says, that the history stretches back many centuries uh, of making dip and fountain pen inks. The next point here, mysterious. Now this is what uh, I found really interesting about this uh, brand, is the fact that there is so little around about it. It is a new brand, so like it's not going to have huge history on you know, social media and the internet and things like that, but it does have a fairly mysterious background. I want to read you something now quickly from the website. Originally spawned in the days of alchemy, passing through the enlightenment of the European Renaissance, and finally through the illumination of today's understanding of chemistry, our methods of ink synthesis, formulation, and analysis slash character is second to none. That's a very wordy way of saying, basically, that they have a long tradition. Now, is that the case? Who knows? Uh, this is still under the mysterious column. I go back to those names. Zana Brunnen, which is Cream Fountain, and uh, Kiefen Kloster, which is Pine Monastery. They say that these inks are formulated uh, and made in a monastery. Uh, and then Imperium, Intelligentsia Imperium is a distributor or you know, retailer of these inks made by this religious order. There's a lot going on here, and I kind of love it. Um, doing my research, and when I got sent this ink for review, and I'm incredibly grateful for them sending this ink for review, it was sent from within Australia, from a place in Western Australia, uh, which is listed as their Australian distributor, but everything that you do find in the research about this company 
brings it back to Australia. So um, it's an interesting concept. I I love the mystery. I love the uh, the sort of the uh, you know the intrigue around all of this. It's it's funny. It's hilarious. It's just you know. Whether it's true or not, it's a really great story, and I enjoy that a lot. The last of these five points uh, is that it is luxe. So it's a deluxe product. Like, the bottle is insanely beautiful, and that wax seal presentation there is lovely. They've gone to a huge amount uh, of effort here, um, you know, with the packaging and the, the box and all these design elements. So wherever they are in the world, whoever they are, They've done a really lovely job uh, and should be, you know, sort of commended for that as well. Like every bottle is numbered. You get like, you know, you've got your individual number on the on the certificate of, in, you know, authenticity there. So let's uh, talk about uh, the performance now of this ink. So I said it's a fair performance on lower end paper, no worse than most other ink. Perhaps a little bit, uh, it feathers perhaps a touch more, uh, but it's got nice performance on good paper, as you can see sort of here on the Tomor River. Um, one thing is that it has a really interesting feel in the pen. Um, it's somewhat wet. Um, like, I just wanted to sort of do a little bit of a scribble here, just to sort of show, like, like you can see it goes on really quite wet. And when you sort of do the smudge, it sort of takes a while to dry on the paper. So it is a wet, ink in that respect, but it's not a lubricated ink. Uh, it feels like, uh, you know, it, it does feel nicer in broader nibs uh, because it's not like, as I said, it's not a lubricated ink in that way. Uh, but, and I consider this to be like a mid saturation ink. So it's not super saturated. It's, it's certainly readable even in the lighter shading, but uh, it's definitely not, you know, one of these like deeply, deeply saturated inks. Uh, extras, there's no shimmer machine and it has good shading as I've said here. So I want to show it on some other paper now. For, so firstly, oh, I should, what, just, what I'll do is I'll show you the reverse of this page. So you can see nothing has come through, like it's performed relatively well here on the uh, on the uh, Tomo River paper. Next uh, is the Rhodia uh, that I have it on here, which is the Rhodia 80 gram paper. Uh, Intelligentsia Imperium, Theros Brown. It's, there's occasional little bits of feathering, and that's because that, as I said, that sort of like wet quality on the paper is quite high. Um, it looks nice, the color is beautiful, um, and it performs sort of quite well across the board. If we look on the reverse of that page, none of the, there's a, well, when I say none, there's a couple of spots where it has come through, um, but not too bad at all. Uh, I would personally expect less on Rhodia, uh, but as I said, it's that quality of the, the wetness of that ink. The two lower end papers I have it on here is reflex uh, copy paper, like standard, you know, printer paper. The color is a lot more washed out and there's, as I said, there's that feathering. As I, I wouldn't say washed out, I'd say it's more even, like it's less shading because it's just absorbed so quickly into the paper and uh, we do get the bleed through which you would expect from most inks on this paper. When we look at it here on sort of Spirex and notepad paper, this is just a student lecture pad, um, there's no more feathering than on the copy paper. Uh, the color is a little more dull. Uh, this paper tends to do that. And so this is what you will get, you know, on this paper. And on the reverse, uh, it is pretty clearly coming through. But once again, not fountain pen friendly paper, very, very loose weave paper and what you would expect from it. So let's continue down here. So we've got the chromatography, uh, which uh, shows a lovely range of sort of colors that go into this ink. And actually, when you look at something like that smear, for instance, and you're here in the water uh, test, you actually do see some of these sort of colors coming through, which is really nice. Um, those blues and greens are apparent here in the swatch. This is the swatch of Tharos Brown. Um, it's nice. Um, and if we look at the comparisons I've just uh, pulled up here uh, for a few different inks, we've got uh, Pelican, that's Smoky Quartz. And so you see some of the similarities there in that mid-tone. It's just not got the darkness that Pelican has. And then with Visconti Sepia, uh, once again, some mid-tones, a couple like those shading, but uh, it's a, this is, I consider this sort of like a, it's almost got tints of sort of a greeny brown coming through. Now, Intelligentsia Imperium does have a description of this ink, 
and they say it's a warm brown ink inspired by the underlying earth supporting the ruins of the ancient Phoenician colony of Tharos, located on the west coast of Sardinia, Italy. Um, and a lot of their inks have these very elaborate descriptions. Uh, so I'm, I, as I said, I really like the, uh, the mystery of this ink and the brand. Let's now talk about the uh, price here. Okay, so it's a 55 ml bottle. So as I said, it's a good size bottle and it retails for 39.50 Australian. Now, if you were just buying a bottle of ink and it would cost 39 Australian dollars, that is pushing it for me. Thinking say like a bottle of Diamine, an 80 ml bottle of Diamine, retails in Australia for around $25. So for 55 mils for 39, it is a premium product. It is premium price. Premium, premium, premium. It's what you're paying for it. But you also get, like, as I said, like these certificates of authenticity, which, like, let's be real, how, like, there's no way of, you know, proving any of this. It's just a nice touch. Um, and then, you know, lovely packaging with, you know, these beautiful, you know, inlays, and it's a real presentation piece, and how this ink is presented is beautiful. So lots to love there, uh, but you are paying a reasonable amount of money for it. And I can't say how much it costs in other countries, uh, depend on conversion and things like that. Uh, and of course, postage and all those sorts of things. And at the moment, I think they're only available through the Intelligentsia Imp Imperium website. Um, so score, I have given this 3.5 to 4 out of 5. Now, 3.5 leans more towards some of the performance on lower end paper and even some of that slight bleeding on Rhodia. Um, but the four is leaning towards the fact that I really enjoy the color and uh, I love the mystery. As I said, uh, I like the mystery. I enjoy uh, this ink on good paper and I find it very interesting. I think some of the colors and the shading is really nice. Um, it's not a boring ink. And I, as I said, the brand is interesting. I love that mystery. I love what they're creating around it. Whoever they are, wherever they are, doesn't matter. If the inks can perform, that's what we're here for. And on things like Tom or River and Rodeo and Clairefontaine, this performs well enough. Um, I would hope that, uh, you know, perhaps down the line, some of the some of the formulations can be made to be a little less brutal on lower end paper. Um, you know, something about the viscosity of this ink is very low. Perhaps that can be worked on. But, uh, you know, who knows what the, that religious order is doing uh, to, you know, create this ink. So this was the Intelligentsia Imperium Tharos Brown, really interesting ink, really interesting company and uh, a nice colour. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. Please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me on any of my videos here or drop me an email which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there's a way you'd like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, like Intelligentsia Imperium did here, and I thank them very, very much, um, I would love to hear from you. It's your support that makes this channel possible. In the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.